Hello, and welcome to Realusion Hints and Tips. iClone 3D Exchange Overview. Getting familiar with the general user interface, features, and conversion abilities. 3D Exchange is a powerful converter that makes it easy for users to convert any 3DS or OBJ file. Using content created in applications such as 3D Studio Max, ZBrush, Google SketchUp, or Maya, etc., users can convert and edit their models for importation into iClone as props, accessories, or even 3D scenes. 3D Exchange also allows users to load props and accessories or 3D scene VNS files made with iClone into 3D Exchange to modify specific objects' position, orientation, size, scale, shadow settings, and much more. This is wonderful for generating lots of content for custom libraries or packs for sale as iClone content packs. This overview tutorial will introduce you to the general user interface, key features, tools, panels, and options presented when using 3D Exchange. Introduction to creating custom props and custom accessories also is covered in 20 easy to follow steps. So let's go ahead and get started now. The six main sections of the GUI or graphic user interface. Section 1, the main menu. Section 2, the toolbar. Section 3, the 3D viewer. Section 4, the scene tree. Section 5, the scene transform panel. Section 6, the node attribute panel. Section 1, the main menu, is broken up into five sections that control 3D Exchange. File, Tools, View, Window, and Help. For step number one, go to File, Open, or use hotkey Control plus O, and select a 3D base r.3ds file. Download the file from www.amazing3d.com forward slash free forward slash free dot shtml. Step number two, use the tools menu to perform tasks like centering the object if the creator has placed the content elsewhere in the scene or aligning to ground if the model has been placed above or below the grid. This usually comes in most useful when working with a model that was not modeled specific to iClone's parameters. Go to Tools, Align to Ground to align your base. Step number three, the view menu is great for seeing all aspects of your model like viewing in wireframe mode or observing the bounding box or specific nodes around portions of your model. The view menu provides a great way to access a, any visual guide or aspect designed to help you better edit or develop your 3D content. Select the A3 base 02 node in the scene tree and then go to view highlight wireframe to view the bass guitar's wireframe mesh. Step number four, to get the absolute best view possible of your 3D content, use hotkey F11 to enter full screen mode. This will exclude all other general user interface aspects and only show the 3D viewer's perspective. Step number five, use the help section to find technical step-by-step -step instructions in the help file to further explain features and advanced editing. The rest of the help section is meant to provide users with ways to work with their new version of 3D Exchange with everything from registering your product to checking for updates or seeing what the latest updates with Realusion or 3D Exchange are via the web. Use hotkey F1 to open the help file then exit. 
the toolbar is divided into six sections of tool icons that affect specific areas of 3D exchange. Step number six. Use the reload button in the file handler section of the toolbar to reload the content. This is to show users that if a change is made to the model during the process of conversion, that is not something that is desired in the end output, then simply reload the content to its original status. This provides a way to try many different editing techniques on the same model without having to worry about original settings being affected. Use hotkey F5 to reload your project, and this will return all aspects to the default settings. Step number seven, click on the 3BBRDG node in the scene tree the 3D viewer controls are designed to allow you to view objects from any angle or position using zoom, pan, rotate, and roll. You can easily focus in on specific nodes pertaining to the individual elements that make up certain models. Use these tools to focus in on the bass guitar's bridge. Step number eight, the dummy object is an important feature in 3D Exchange because it is a proportion guide for iClone. Using it ensures that when you export your content into iClone, it will already be pre-scaled and ready for production. Click the dummy icon from the toolbar and take notice that the bass guitar is much too small at the moment in relation to the size of the dummy object or reference. Step number nine. Another key feature that is used to change and enhance the level of visibility to your objects is the ability to turn on and off individual lights, or have them all on at once in 3D Exchange. Users have the option to turn lights on and off, and a colored light as well, to see the effects a colored light will have on your content. Click the Full Light icon from the toolbar to activate lights for a brighter look from all angles. Step 10. The two last tools to cover are the pixel shader and the full screen mode. These tools are both used to review the model in the full resolution and all effects active. In the full view of your personal monitor when full screen is checked as well, use hotkey Control plus F1 to toggle on the pixel shader. It will use more resources, but the model should be reviewed in its complete form before exporting. Section 3 is the 3D Viewer, which is the main viewport for all aspects of 3D Exchange. Section 4 is the Scene Tree, a complete list of all mesh nodes or objects in any scene. Step number 12, at the bottom of the Scene Tree, locate the Select All button to select both nodes in the scene at once along with the Scene Root. The scene tree is the fastest way to select portions of your models or the entire list of objects at once. Using the checkboxes, you can quickly include the parts you want and exclude those you don't. This is wonderful for editing some elements individually as well. The fifth section is the scene transform panel. This section provides editable controls for the entire transform attribute. Step 13. Now to move, rotate, and scale the bass guitar to be in the position and proportion that a real bass guitar would be in relation to the accessory placement for iClone Avatar's waist. In the three fields under the Move section, place values of 20, 10, and 30. Move down a row and set the third rotate field to a value of 200. Move down once more and place a value of 220 in the scale field. Be sure to have the lock XYZ box checked into the on position. This will appear to be placed at the dummy's feet, but when imported and applied to the waist of an avatar as an accessory, it will be perfectly placed to interact properly with your bass player.
Section 6, the Node Attribute Control Panel. Divided into four main sections, Selected and Included, Color and Specular, Shadow and Normal. Step 14, in the Node Attribute Panel, check on Modify Specularity checkbox to enhance the specular and glossiness levels of the bass guitar. That way when the lights and eye clone are set, the new proper accessory will have a more realistic reaction to the lighting situations. Set the specular to 25 and set the glossiness to 50. Make sure that cast shadow and receive shadow are both checked on as well to act naturally in relation to iClone's lights. Use hotkey Control e to export your base now. Make sure and check the bullet point for accessory to export our content as an accessory to be used in iClone. Then click OK. Step 15. For this step you will need to download a stool model to see an example of a flipped node. Download the model at www.amazing3d.com forward slash free forward slash free dot shtml. After downloading the file, go to File Open and open a3dstool.3ds. In the scene tree, select BST. OOL2 node. To flip the node, check the flip box. Step number 16. After clicking the flip box, you will now want to change the look of your model. For an overall change in color, you will check the modify color box and then click on the color swatch to activate the color menu. Choose a dark gray then click OK to apply. At this point you may want to turn off the wireframe and zoom in to get a closer look of the flipped normal. Step number 17, after reviewing the flipped normal, flip it back by again clicking the flip box. You will now want to align your stool to the ground. Go ahead and locate the align to ground button in the scene transform panel and click align to ground to achieve this. Step number 18, turn the dummy reference back on by clicking the dummy icon, then use the zoom tool to zoom out and observe the entire dummy object in perspective. You will then need to scale up the stool to meet with the iClone proportions. With the lock XYZ checkbox checked on, enter a value of 275 to scale the stool to the proper size. Step number 19, with the B stool 2 node still selected, locate the auto smooth button in the node attribute panel. Then enter a value of 100 into the field and click Auto Smooth to apply. Take notice that the stool is now more smooth and ready for export. Step number 20. You are now ready to export your stool. Use hotkey Control plus E to export the model and check the bullet point to be sure that you're exporting as a prop. And you have now successfully exported both a prop and accessory from 3D Exchange into iClone. 3D Exchange is a gateway of ease for users to aggregate 3D content into and out of iClone. The options for building large library of accessories, props, and scenes are almost endless. Whether you only need to make a quick size or color change to a 3D model, or you need portions or key elements of the model to be converted, 3D Exchange provides a quick and easy access outlet for changes like these to be made before you transport them into iClone. So the next time you're ready to take on the role of Citizen Director, you've got a production tool you can count on to build a bridge between you and the resources you need to set the stage. For more information, 
please visit www.realusion.com or contact technical support.